did mention health being one of the reasons it possibly could be a reason why you haven't been brought back. Now, what's going on with your health? So a year and a half ago, you know, COVID happened for everybody. And most people just were worried about getting sick from COVID. I, I personally didn't have that worry. I'm very health orientated, been running a chiropractic health organization for 20 years now. So our the way we view health is very different from, say, the news and, and what they relay. But we had this transition of we lived in L.A. for 23 years and we decided that we were supposed to move to Texas. And this was not an easy transition. This is us. We we're living the American dream, had a practice that was running beautifully. Kids were in their schools. Life was good. And I just knew that our next step in life, like our vision to serve was supposed to be in here in Texas. Mm. So we sold everything. We moved my family of five and a big boxer into an RV. And then we're like, let's make this fun. And so we did 21 stops um, all the way from California to Texas and national parks and exploring. But every week, my husband had to fly back to work. And so I would manage the kids and the dog. And, and it was wonderful to have this special time. But at the same time, I fell off my my rituals a little, not really having my green shakes and drinking my water and, uh, you know, doing my exercise the way I would. Mm -hmm. And at 21, my body, I was in uh, Colorado, Junction, Colorado, having a beautiful day. And I went to the mall. I wasn't feeling good. And I was like, I'm not feeling good. Maybe I need to have lunch. You know, I haven't had lunch yet. So I get lunch for me and my kids, my three daughters, and we're sitting at a table and I could just feel it like, not going so good and i was like maybe uh it's blood sugar i don't have any issues with blood sugar yeah. you know no medicines but i know people say when their blood sugar is low you have some candy right so i said go give me a candy out of the candy machine and i just couldn't even eat it and i saw this baker in a cupcake shop and i just went straight to him and i said is there a medic in the mall I'm not okay. I have three kids. I'm in a strange place. I have no family, friends, and I'm not okay. Can you come help me? And he's like, I'll call security. I sat down, and before you know it, I'm on the ground, convulsed. Mm. Uh, I I don't pass out, but I'm, I'm, I'm not conscious. Like, I can't open my eyes. I know where I am, but I can't see anything. And I just keep saying, I have three kids. I have three kids. And I hear this lady saying, I'm here. I'm watching your kids. 911 comes, I go to the hospital, run all the tests, x-rays, and they say, you had a panic attack. And I said, panic attack? For what? Like, mm. I, was having a I wasn't worried about anything. I wasn't scared about anything. You know, like, wh why do I have, why did I have that? And then what happened after that was the most shocking thing for me. I had an attack every single day for the next four months. I mean, every single day. And for people that don't know about this, uh, it's basically like your body and your mind runs a marathon every time you have an attack. And so I was just beat to a pulp. And so I started, you know, what's happening with me? Uh, I tried medications. That's not my first protocol, but I was like, I'm dying. Like, I am not okay. Right. Those made me worse. And I was like, okay, so I tried a different one. And then I'm on supplements. And before you know it, I'm getting brain scans done to see what's going on in my brain. And we found out I basically, I, I hit rock bottom. I have a level three adrenal fatigue. I had no hormones in my body from the stress. It's basically, I was living in fight or flight for this entire journey. And to build that up, I can't replace my adrenals with a supplement if I have no hormones in my body. Hmm. And if I take hormones, the stress eats it before it deposits it in my body. So I've been on a vicious cycle for a year and a half. I mean, I couldn't take my kids to school. I take one to school, pull over, I have to go through a panic attack to get my next kids to school. My husband was transitioning still. His work was in LA, so I'm full-time by myself, not feeling safe. And it has just worn me out. Like, talk about visiting the depths of hell and uh, really mentally, like, not stable i really had to go through that that journey um mm. which has been really tough so so for those of you that don't know steve has been asking for this interview for a really long time and i really wanted to do it but i didn't know how i could show up because i don't know when it's going to happen you know I, I mean it could happen right, now. right. so the the moving to texas you know i'm not a doctor so 
you know, this is me talking. I moved to Texas, maybe, you know, transitioning that quickly, your children pulled out of school as well. Maybe everyone's stress somehow, you know, you felt it and you got it more than the rest. I have no idea. Why was the move to Texas um, needed? If you're, it sounds like your husband was working, going back and forth. Well, so COVID had hit. And at first I think it was like, oh, we get some time home. This is kind of fun, you know? And then then it got really pretty nasty, I think, on many different levels, and everybody felt it in different ways. I think the thing that the news doesn't tell you about is so many people suffered loneliness and loss mm. and disconnection and fear and hate. I mean, I would be in L.A., and if you didn't have a mask on for a second, I mean, people were hating on you and yelling on you. Yeah. So values became really a forefront for me. So I'm a crisis coach in my life now. And what I realized is my values don't line up with the values of where I'm at. And so I had homeschooled my kids for two years. I have three kids. Um, Nice to try that and quickly realizing I'm so grateful for teachers. Like that's not my dream, not my passion. I'm glad I got to do it. But I was like... I need to be in a place that supports my values. You know, um, you know, I don't want to get too political in this conversation, but I'm the kind of person I have my beliefs and values. I Mm -hmm. expect to respect them. You have yours and I expect you me to respect yours. Like if I believe in this president or this president or taking the vaccine or not, or wearing a mask or not. Mm. And here, I feel like you're respected for your choices. And it was a, A thing that initially gave us this push to move. But the reality is I just had a vision that we were meant to be here. Like, you know, people say you get these visions. I I think our service and our practice of healthcare and chiropractic and and our life center that we're building here is to serve so many more people and just enjoy life a little bit more. LA is a lot about hustle and bustle. And I love that for 23 years. And I'm at a different phase in my life. Our values change and grow as we get older, right? And as you go through things. And this is just where we were meant to be. I didn't want to be retiring there and raising my kids there. It it just wasn't meant for my family. 